I'm going to show you how to make your own candles broken down into five steps. My name is Brooks. I run a brand called Nowhere Land and this is episode 11 of Going Nowhere. Candles are one of the newest products I've added to the catalog and it's one of the only products that I can truly say is 100% handmade by me. It's been really fun to learn a new skill and take a deep dive on YouTube of all the different ways to make candles, which is maybe why you're watching this video. Now, I say this every time, but when it comes to making candles, there are a lot of different ways to go about it and it can definitely be overwhelming. So if you are just looking for a quick step-by-step, -step, you can follow along to this video exactly and you will have your very own handmade candles by the end. But if you're more curious and want to take a deep dive down the candle rabbit hole, there are a lot of different tools and products to experiment with. I went through a lot of testing and experimenting before I got to the version of the candles I'm about to show you. So I suggest trying things out and having fun if you want to go that route and make something that's unique to you. Let's get into it. Step one, candle purpose. Before you get into actually making anything, you want to decide what these candles are for. Are they for your business? Are they just for fun? Are they for a gift? In my case, these candles are for my business, Nowhere Land. So I kept with the outdoor and adventure theme when designing and coming up with the fragrance options. If you're just making these candles at home for fun, maybe this first step isn't as important, but I always like to skew my videos to the idea of making products for your business. Knowing how you want these candles to fit within your company theme will determine what kind of wax, vessels, and labeling you might use. I will link below all the companies that I use to get my materials. That way you can explore all the options. Here's a look at all the materials I'm going to use in the next four steps and I'll go into more depth about each one when they come up in the process. The first step may take the longest but it's important to know before you start buying stuff that you may want to change later on. But once you decide we can jump into step two. Prepping wicks and tins. The materials needed for this are the wicks, wick setter, wick sticks, and candle tins or vessels. I knew I wanted to use a metal tin for my vessel. I think it lines up with the nature and outdoor vibe. I went with a 16 ounce short tin, although I don't know why they call it a 16 ounce tin because it definitely doesn't hold 16 ounces of wax. It holds closer to like 10 or 11. Anyway, knowing the size of vessel you have, will determine how many wicks you need. Obviously, the smaller the vessel, the less wicks you'll need. I'm gonna be using three for mine. I'm going to say the words wicks and candle and wax like a thousand times during this video, but there's no other way to describe these things, so sorry. Let's prep the tins and wicks. We're going to take our roll of wick stickers, which is basically just thick double-sided tape, and peel off the top layer of paper to reveal the adhesive. Then you will take your wick. I'm using the LX12, which is a recommended wick to use with the wax that I am using, and we can get into that in a second. So you will place all your wicks onto the stickers. Now, we take our wick setter and slide the top end of the wick into the slot. Since this is a three wick candle, you will put three in at a time but this wick setter can be adjusted if you are using less wicks for your candle. Then you take your candle tin, put the setter on top and press firmly so the bottom adhesive sticks to the tin. Once all the wicks are in, we are going to take our wick bar, which is the only item that I had to make myself. I'm sure someone sells something like this already made, but I couldn't find exactly what I needed. So I hot glued two popsicle sticks together in an X shape then drilled holes in the same spots where the wick setter placed the wicks. This tool is used for keeping the wicks in place while you pour the wax and while it dries and hardens. Which leads us into step three, melting wax and fragrance oils. The materials needed for this are the wax melter, pitcher, stir stick, thermometer, scale, fragrance oil, gloves, and candle wax. When you get a little more comfortable with the process, you can slide this step into the beginning. Since it does take some time for the candle wax to actually melt, you can do this step first and then prep your tins while the wax melts. With my current setup, my wax melter holds about six pounds of wax at a time. I put about a hundred ounces of wax in just to make the measurements for the fragrance percentages easier. So let's measure out 100 ounces or six pounds, four ounces of wax. I did want to mention that I do recommend wearing gloves while you do this. I forgot to put on mine for the video, but the fragrance oil is very strong and will stay on your skin for a while. 
Also, try doing it in a room with the window open. I'm using Golden Wax 454, which is a soy coconut blend. I knew I wanted to keep the wax all natural for a cleaner burn rather than using paraffin wax, which is synthetic and has chemicals in it. Like I mentioned earlier, depending on the wax you are using, the supplier usually gives a recommendation on the wick type you should use. We need to heat the wax up to 185 degrees before adding in the fragrance oil. So while the wax melts, let's prepare the fragrance. Most waxes have a recommended fragrance load, which basically means the amount of oil that the wax will absorb. I usually use an 8.5 to 9% fragrance load. Through my testing, that seems to work the best for my specific setup. I'm using four different fragrances combined for this specific candle. So I just divided 8.5 ounces evenly between the four and then pour them all together into one container, measuring everything with the scale. Once the wax reaches 185, I unplug it to stop the heating and I add in the fragrance oil and stir for two to three minutes, making sure it is really incorporated into the wax. Now we are ready for step four, pouring wax. For this step, you just need the wax dispenser. Using the pour spout on the side of the wax melter, you will fill your dispenser with the wax. All your candle tins should be good to go and prepped so you are ready to pour. If you are trying to hit a specific weight on your candles, in my case, I am pouring 10.5 ounces of wax into each, I recommend weighing them while you pour, but I have done it enough to know how full it is when it reaches that weight, so I just do it by eye now. This cool dispenser is actually meant for making funnel cake, but it works out perfectly for pouring candles and helps keep the mess down, although I do end up spilling every time anyways, but that could just be my fault. With my setup, I can make 10 candles at a time. So once the tins are filled, we wait for them to cool and solidify, which takes a few hours to fully harden. So I will catch you back here in a little for step five, quality control and labeling. The materials needed for this step are labels, heat gun, paper towels or rags, and a wick cutter. We are so close to having finished retail ready candles. If you don't plan on using these as a product for your business and you're just doing this for funsies, some of these last steps might not be necessary for you. As a part of the quality control, I like to wipe down the tins and make sure they are clean of any wax residue. That way the labels will apply nicely and the tins aren't all gross with fingerprints and wax. You can do this with a paper towel or a wet and dry rag. Then we need to trim the wicks to about a quarter inch ish from the top of the wax. They make fancy wick cutters, which aren't necessary to buy. I found that these wire cutters actually work quite well. This next part is really just for presentation and isn't necessary for the function of the candle, but you will notice that when your candle dries, sometimes the tops are bumpy or cracked or have bubbles. So I like to take a heat gun and melt the top layer of wax, which gives it a nice smooth finish. And for the last part, the labels. I design custom labels for the side and top of my tins. The side design is more art focused, conveying what type of scent the candle is, and the top label gives all the details about the actual candle. If you are making these for your business, I do recommend taking the time to make labels that fit your brand and give your candles a unique finish. Since I have mostly outdoor inspired scents, I did three different labels for those three different scents. If you are curious how I make labels and stickers, I have a video about that on my channel as well if you wanna check that out. Putting them on is pretty simple as you can see, but it really gives them a nice finished product look. And that's it. That was a lot of talking, but we have our candles. Lastly, let your candles cure for one to one and a half weeks before burning to get the best scent throw. Let's take a look at the final product. Get these candles on my website, nowherelandsupply.com. Leave a comment if you have any questions about the process or have any suggestions about something that worked better for you. As always, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.